Hello, everyone. I'm Kat Timpf, along with Eric Bowling and Ebony K. Williams. We are the Fox News Specialists. Well, it's been new twist after new twist today in the soap opera known as the Russia investigation. President Trump delivering a stunning tweet earlier, writing, quote, I am being investigated for firing the FBI director by the man who told me to fire the FBI director. Witch hunt. Sources tell Fox News the tweet is in reference to Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, who's overseeing the Russia investigation. Also, a source close to Trump's legal team tells Fox that President Trump was, of course, not confirming in that tweet that he was under investigation for possible obstru obstruction. Instead, they say he was just referencing the Washington Post report that claims an obstruction probe is underway. And that's just the tip of the iceberg today. All right, Eric, so I know the legal team this. said the legal team said he's not confirming, but right. what else could I am under investigation possibly mean? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. And, and first, the all day long, people are speculating where they talking about Rosenstein, Rosenstein or are they talking about um, Mueller? Who are they really talking about? But I guess Fox has asked the team. They said Rosenstein. But think about this. So Rod Rosenstein did recommend that they fire Mueller. So Rod Rosenstein is the guy who hi I'm sorry fire Comey, but Rod Rosenstein is the guy who hired Mueller. So yeah. now we're hearing, get ready for this, Rod Rosenstein might recuse himself because he feels like he may be too involved in the Russia story. So that would bring on, let me see, it was Rachel Brand, who's the associate attorney general. Now she's the third in line at the, at, at the DOJ. So I don't, it, it's getting crazy. Let me just leave you with this thought. Stock market, the Dow made a brand new high, all-time record high. Today closed at that high, 21,384, five or so. Uh, a record unemployment, 4.3%. It's not been this low since 2001, 16 years ago. Meanwhile, this special counsel, um, Mueller said he hired 13 new lawyers, this couple of, either today or yesterday. 13 new lawyers, uh, Ebony, a thousand bucks an hour, probably, you know, top, I mean, top lawyer. Ebony on the low end. On the I mean, low end. You know, okay, let's do average, math on that. Yeah. 15 <laughs> to 20 lawyers, thousand bucks an hour, eight hours a day, maybe a year. We're talking probably longer. 50 million just for the lawyers, maybe another 50 million for the staff and, and, and depositions and travel. You're talking a hundred million dollar investigation at least. Meanwhile, still waiting for that one shred Ebony, of evidence. Your thoughts? Whew. Okay, so many hiring and firings. It's really hard to keep track. Um, I will say I love those numbers, Eric, that you talk about our economy, and I love that now we're going to count those and, and feel good about those very low unemployment numbers. Um, that's amazing. I love it. Uh, but in all sincerity, here's the thing. Was um, there a tongue in there? Was a, that was tongue all, stuck in you, you, a cheek right there? Did you catch that, Eric? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. But in all seriousness, I'm glad Americans are working. That's important. And that's good. Uh, you know, Cad, look, I, I think that this is the problem, though, when the president talks about his Twitter being official statements, it does become hard to yep. decipher what's meant by the tweet today. Yep. All right. Well, let's meet today's specialists. She's a longtime Washington correspondent, including stints with Real Clear Politics and National Journal. She's the current White House correspondent for the Independent Journal Review, but she specializes in perfect <laughs> grammar. Erin McPike is here. And she's the senior director of research and consumer insight for Bustle.com. She's also author of the upcoming book, America in the Age of Trump, which comes out July 4th. But she specializes in Hillary Clinton fangirling. Jessica Tarlov is here. <laughs> All right, so let's start with that tweet from President Trump today, what it means for Rod Rosenstein's involvement in the Russia probe. What do you think? I'm being investigated, Jessica. What does that mean to you? Does that necessarily mean he's being investigated, or did he mean something else? No, I think he yeah. meant it. Most I do of the too. time, I have a question as to what he meant. This morning, he was actually quite exact, and I, I found Twitter hugely amusing this morning. <laughs> They're pulling up all the old tweets, right, of Sarah Huckabee saying, if you're being investigated by the FBI, you shouldn't be president, about Hillary Clinton, mm. right? Trump saying, you can't have a president who's being investigated by the FBI. Well, lo and behold, we do have a, a president who's being investigated. Um, I think it's better to have all of that out there. I think that he should engage in the conversation if he wants Twitter to be his official statements. Uh, he should certainly talk to his lawyer beforehand when he does mm -hmm. things like that, because I'm sure his legal team is none too pleased about what's going on. Um, but if this is his mode of communication, I'd rather he be honest, frankly, than be telling us lies. I would, too. Well, has he said that? That what? Said what? I mean, have we, have we, Aaron, have we found out that, that Donald Trump, President 
Donald Trump is being investigated? He said, I am yeah, but he being investigated. He said, according to the Washington Post, well, that's which what is the legal team said. Anonymous, that's anonymous, that's anonymous, anonymous leaks. Okay, wait, anonymous yeah, he leaks would have said, fake news, that. Washington Post says I'm being investigated. Well, he's, well, I think he's being more hypocrite. He's more being more... Uh, uh, I, you know, like, I don't oh, okay. understand what you're the saying. The person Eric. who recommended I fire Comey is now thinking about investigating. That was my favorite part. It was the person who, it was the man who suggested that I fire Comey. After he said I was going to fire him at, at, anyway, after he said it first, <laughs> Rosenstein recommended it. To, I mean, what is it? He yeah. went back and forth on that no, story No, no, but, but Rosenstein did send a memo to Donald Trump After saying, Trump I, I would recommend right. letting, let, letting Comey go. And Trump said, yeah, I got the memo, but I also wanted to do it. But the president asked him for that memo. He said yeah. he was going to fire Comey anyway. He's been back and forth on that. Right, but you don't see don't the, you you don't, you, you don't see the hypocrisy well? of the guy who recommended firing Comey being at the he forefront of the investigation into why he fired Comey. Which he was going to do anyway. That's the point, yeah. But no, no, I, actually, no, I see no, what no, you're no. saying, Eric. I see what you're saying. My, you're saying the, is, the hypocrisy. Is, 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 right. This it, is, is a guy who made a recommendation right. around the status, the employment status of James Comey, who is now being, at least in the front end, also involved in the investigation as to why Comey was actually Totally. Fired. No, I understand but that part. But he's taking the right kind of responsibility then in saying that he may have to recuse himself yes, from this I agree. Yeah, I, I think, think that he's acted completely appropriately and diplomatically here. I don't know what happened in that conversation where Donald Trump asked him to, to write that letter, um, but it seems like he's done nothing inappropriate. So, so what's going to happen, Jess, on the left, when and if Rod Rosenstein recuses himself? So if Sessions recusing himself, number one. Number two, Rosenstein recuses. You're down to Rachel Brand, who's a Harvard graduate, fine. U.S. Chamber of Not Commerce shabby. and worked for Bush 43, but the left is going crazy, saying they don't want her either. No, are you, you going to keep listen, having think, people recuse, accuse themselves no, to think, find a liberal that'll stick it to Trump? I, I mean, there are plenty of liberals and Republicans who, if he is guilty of this, are going to be thrilled to stick it to Trump. I don't think it's about party anymore. I mean, Bob Mueller is a Republican. People are going crazy that he's hired all these Democrats who maxed out to Hillary Clinton at twenty. Well, you don't think he's that's a, a slight conflict of interest no, there? No, I don't. These you're a, you're a donor to Hillary Clinton. You're, you're a Democrat, party. and you're hired. You're being. You're coming on to investigate the Republican president. Do you only think that people can be independents and have these jobs, or they have to be non-voters? I'm all for independents well, having uh, jobs. Just I also like people. <laughs> I also like people who may not be donors. I mean, you, know, you can also be a, a Democrat without being a major political donor. A $2,700 donation does is not the max. mean that they... Is it, the max. it is the max, but it doesn't mean that they were bundlers who raised billions of dollars or there were these elections, millions and billions, because we spend too much on elections. You know, you I know, mean... Th there's a reason why matter? we shouldn't and don't, as, as media yeah. journalists, opinion journalists even, shouldn't and don't uh, contribute, contribute to campaigns. Because yeah. yeah. people do read into it right. think the wrong way um, or can certainly make a case for the sense that maybe you, your objectivity is compromised. Now, I agree with you, Jessica. I don't like the presumption that by automatically associating yourself with a political party, you now cannot do your job right. in any capacity. We don't want to set that precedent. But if you are looking to make that argument, it becomes easier when there's a donation. Right. Right. Good luck finding independence in the legal field. I mean, not, good luck. Not, you're, you're sitting next to one. Well, Aaron, <laughs> not independence, but I, I don't know which I don't know which way you lean right or you lean left but I'm guessing that uh, do you make political donations to campaigns? I don't. Okay why? Because I'm a journalist. Uh, exactly so why why is that is that too high of a standard Rob to Rosenstein, expect Bob well, Mueller, not is that journalists. too high of a standard to expect a guy who's going to who's going to investigate the president to not have been a political donor to, a, to, to Hillary Clinton? I, I, under, I understand what you're saying but I am curious as to who would be appropriate then? Someone, I mean, you, a lot of people, you need to hire a lot of Hillary. 15 people or Trump. who um, are making $1,000 an hour plus, and you need to find 15 of them who are well qualified and Qualified, qualified enough, and they have never made a political donation in, the, in their lives. You're going to be hard pressed. Well, not to necessarily in their it. lives, it, certainly not to the opponent that he. Okay, just so for so to the opponent. Okay, all right. Deputy, well, I mean, yeah, you know, even, I even, I, I even that, Trump's, yeah. the yes. person who Trump nominated for the, re the replacement, he's given to Republicans. Uh, in, when you're in these positions, you are often somebody who does donate to candidates. I That's will say, when I was in private practice, to your point, Aaron, I actually tried to make it a habit of not donating. Mm -hmm. I think I gave $50 one time. Other than that, I don't, because, again, this becomes the perception. And so you're right. That's not the rule of law for uh, legal experts or other people that work in the legal field. But I do think maybe that is something we should explore, maybe as a Attorneys, we shouldn't be donating either. But does it bother you that Mueller is a Republican then, Eric? Do you think I, that he should again, be? Again, please, uh, you know, you and I have worked together for so long. I know it's so Jess, great, isn't it? Listen to me. <laughs> I'm not, I don't have a problem with their political affiliation. I have a problem that they maxed out their donation as a, 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 to, to the Democrat who was Donald Trump's 
Well, she's uh, gone. She's on, in the woods now. I know, but I mean, why pick them? That, that means they clearly have a bias towards Hillary Clinton, I, towards liberalism, towards against Donald Trump. I, I, I'm not sure that that's what it means when they serve in a position that is first and foremost about serving your country over your party. I mean, I, I would just you don't... want the person investigating Donald Trump at, at the head have it, have, it, have that person have been a political uh, donor to Donald Trump campaign? Would you accept that as a liberal? I, I absolutely would accept that as a no. liberal because I understand no. that people have, right. I deal with people who back candidates that I don't enjoy all the time and I respect them as colleagues and as friends. All right. Well, I don't <laughs> donate. <laughs> Deputy, back. Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein also creating intrigue after releasing a statement last night going after leakers, writing, quote, Americans should exercise caution before accepting as true any stories attributed to anonymous officials. Now, what could he have been talking about? <laughs> it's very strange, right? I've, ne I've never seen anything like Everybody's that. Everybody's been ever. saying that. I might be the only person, but I don't have a problem with this statement. It's didn't say I had a problem. I didn't say I had a problem well, with yes, it. Yes, a lot of people have had problems with this statement. I don't. Obviously, anonymous leaks are causing problems, and they're trying to clamp down on it. And it's obviously it has hurt Rosenstein and his ability to carry out the Justice Department's investigation. So I don't, I really don't have that big. I, I think this is really sad because I've always said that one of the biggest casualties from the 2016 contentious election uh, was the credibility of our very important what should be independent departments in this yeah. country. Uh, Department of Justice, FBI, and the State Department. And what I'm seeing some six months into this uh, presidency is those have not been rehabilitated whatsoever. In fact, I didn't think it could get worse. I think it's worse. I think those departments are in a worse state credibility-wise than they were back in November. I agree with that. Can I ask, Aaron, do you, did you, so that statement, did you, did you think, I, I'm, all day I'm trying to figure out what he's, is he talking about the Jared Kushner leaks that, that, that allegedly happened overnight that the, this investigation was ex, uh, pointing now towards Jared Kushner as well? Uh, who knows? I don't I, know I, I either. I think it's the, the piling up of leaks because even Comey said that some of the leaked news has been wrong. Yes, he did. Yeah, right. That's, a, that's an established fact that some of it has been wrong, which is why you shouldn't accept it as fact. That's no. just a smart yes. thing now, to do. On, on another point that you made, Eric, I just want to say, just because no evidence has been found yet does not mean that it doesn't exist. Okay, so yeah. when do we stop? When a, we get to the end of the hundred million, two hundred, a billion. Do we just keep investigating until we find something, or or do we just keep investigating? Period. Well, we have found some things. I mean, we what? we have right. found things that? about Mike Flynn, right? We have found that Donald Trump asked. James Comey to, he said, I hope, you know, you can back off of the things which James Comey took as a directive. We do know that there were unsavory characters associated with the campaign, like Paul Manafort and Carter Page, who have links to Russians. I mean, there are some acts. We do not have evidence but, 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 of collusion yes, between Donald Trump and the Russians. months but he, into this investigation. It's early. And yeah. 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 Early, early days. days. No Give us some time. There's no evidence of collusion <laughs> or evidence of obstruction of justice and 11 months in, but, and who knows how many hundreds of millions of dollars. We're going to get into the billions and we're going to say, well, you know, not yet. Not yet, but... All right. But Donald Trump is what? Making lawyers great again. All right. Well, <laughs> up, next, up next, President Trump announcing a major crackdown on President Obama's Cuba policy. Is the era of detente with the communist state over? We're coming right back. President Trump upending one of President Obama's most controversial foreign policy decisions, reopening diplomatic and economic ties with Cuba. The two-year-old policy has long been under fire as a big giveaway to the brutal Castro regime. And President Trump announced a major rollback this afternoon in Miami. It's hard to think of a policy that makes less sense than the prior administration's terrible and misguided deal with the Castro regime. Now we hold the cards. We now hold the cards. The previous administration's easing of restrictions on travel and trade does not help the Cuban people. They only enrich the Cuban regime. Therefore, effective immediately, I am canceling the last administration's completely one-sided deal with Cuba. All right, um, we'll bring it around, Aaron, uh, just so that I, I, our audience is clear. This is not a complete rollback of Obama policies. Uh, Americans will still, and people, will, Americans will still be able to travel to Cuba, but we can't do business with the Cuban government and the military. We can do business with the Cuban people, 
but not anything that has, the, and as if you know Cuban policy, almost everything is intertwined with the government and the military. Right. So it seems to me that the Trump administration wants to have this both ways. If they actually, if he actually wanted to keep his campaign promise, it would have been a complete rollback, and it wasn't quite that. So, you know, he said that he's doing this on the on the grounds of human rights. But, the, but he's kind of walked both lines on that, too, obviously, because in the Trump administration's dealings with Saudi Arabia and others, you've had Rex Tillerson, the Secretary of State, say, you know, that's our value, but it's not our policy. So he's... Right, but he... Uh, uh, Ebony, one of the... Um one of the points of this new Trump Cuban policy is that you have to return American prisoners. Mm -hmm. And so what, what, basically what he's done is he's kept the things that were the economic parts of this alive, at least. It's still alive. So you can still get on a plane and go to Cuba tomorrow if you want to. Good. But what he also has done, he said, you know, if you Cuba, if you want diplomatic relations with us, you need to sit back down at the table and we'll talk about returning those American prisoners and we'll talk about your human rights violations. I think it, it, it captures the, both the good and of, of Obama's and the good of, of Trump's ideas. So here's my only concern, Eric. I am actually all about uh, President Trump's ability to negotiate a better deal for the sake of America. Makes perfect sense to me. It's one of the things I am looking forward to in his administration. My question, though, becomes, to Aaron's point, why are we starting with Cuba when we know about all of the uh, severe human rights uh, violations of Saudi Arabia? Uh, we can talk about Russia. We can talk about many uh, people that we do business with every day. So I'm just curious. It's a real intellectual question. Starting there because, as Aaron points out accurately, it was a campaign promise. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right, Aaron. He does get it both ways in that he gets to address the campaign promise of rolling back Obama's Cuba policy. Cap, well, but also, I think that's why. Well, I think right. that's why. Right. 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 Because Obama. Back, Obama. Okay, okay. Obama. But, 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 hold on, hold on, guys, guys. Before you go crazy hating on Trump, let me tell you. I'm not, uh, this Eric, is, is a, Eric, wait, that's hold. not fair. That's not fair well, to say I'm going crazy okay, hating on okay, Trump. Okay, but listen, but say just allow, me, allow me to finish what go, I'm trying to say, to say This is a very good economic deal for the United States. This is a better economic deal for the United States than Obama's economic deal for the United okay. States with Cuba. Okay, the thing is, though, as both of you have pointed out, getting our prisoners back, good thing. That's obviously a good thing. It's obviously a great thing to want to work out a better deal that's better for us. However, as they both pointed, back, pointed out, it doesn't mean that I'm crazy and hating on Trump to point out that, oh, I have a question about why all of a sudden we're concerned about human rights violations when we're not concerned about but it but with Saudi Cuba, Arabia. Though. Do you like the Cuba, but that's to the Trump Cuba but that's policy? The, it's the question. It, it is a very important well, question because the only difference is Obama liked one and not the other. You could you could flip and say no, the no, same no, thing no, about no, Obama. No, no, no. This allow this gives us leverage. We have the American consumer as a powerful leverage tool to say, hey, Cuba, you want these consumers to come over there? Here's the way we're going to do business with you. you when, the government's not going to take 80 percent of the deal anymore like they were before. And, we'll do deals with you with your people and I'll not accept, your government. And I'll accept that. And, I, and I, I understand that. And that explanation makes a little more to me. I'm just saying the human rights angle doesn't really make. But, but, but we are, and, and I'll bring Jesse, but we are solving part of the human rights problem. Part of it, not all of them, but part of it. Yes. Any American life that comes home who's been held captive somewhere else is a, a wonderful day. And mm -hmm. any economic gains that we would see is also a wonderful thing. I would say, though, that from early estimates that we know of as of today, we're actually going to lose, lose 12,000 jobs, and it could cost us over $6 billion just doing what he has done so far. I would also add that I saw a tweet from a special assistant to the president that called out Barack Obama right away and said, I, you know, love to see what he thinks now. Look what we've done. And it the vengefulness of how Donald Trump conducts right. himself well, can, can, in terms can of we policy. Lift that and can, we, can, can we lift the vengefulness? Can we lift the partisan politics out I'd of it? I'd love if can, Donald Trump could. Can, can anyone tell me that this is a, 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 an economic policy that isn't better for, for Americans? I don't think we know that yet. Right. I mean, we have to see over the next six months to the to a next year what it will look like. So, so do, do a deal with, let's say you're at your hotel uh, company and you want to open a hotel in, in New Havana because now Americans can travel there. Mm -hmm. In the past, under President Obama, yes, you could do that deal, but the Cuban government took a big portion of whatever money was generated from that. Well, look, now, some of the travel restrictions are, are, are being put back into place. Mm -hmm. so, so Americans can travel there, but they have to get special permission to do it. They can't just jump on a plane by themselves and, and go to Cuba. Well, you can. You can. You can make it. You'd like you, to get in you, no, no, trouble. You, no, no, no. You can still do that. Here's the issue. If you go to a hotel or a restaurant that is owned by the Cuban government, 
you may have to talk to, to the Treasury about it when you Which get the back. Which the thing is, they kind of all are. That's what I'm saying. I yeah, mean, that's, you're, you're going no, to a communist no, dictatorial yeah. state. No, and but the that's the point. Has their hands that's in the everything. point. And, and your number, Jess, is fair and valid now. But when you go back to them and say, look, we will open up hotels and restaurant chains over there. But as long as we, we're, the Cuban government isn't getting it, you'll have massive Cuban Alyssa, travel. I, uh, Everyone, I think, on this panel, everyone in this country would love to see economic growth and jobs Absolutely. created yeah. from any deal that this president or any president makes. So, so I think I we're just framing. Are, are, we all, framing. are we all in favor of, of, of human rights violations going away in Cuba? Yeah, but let's well, get on Cuba, to other Hold on. Hold on. Where, where was President Obama? Obama? He didn't negotiate any of that. Eric, well, how did I start my conversation? I said I am oh, all about right. the better deal. I right. simply have a legitimate question as to the nature of, of having how we a got question there. about That's something all. that Trump has done doesn't mean no. that we hate Trump. I, they want us to go, but I'm not saying. I'm saying you're, you're saying yes, but what about you did Saudi that. Arabia? I, well, because well, we're jumping on Trump. Philippines. How about that? This I mean, is a better human to, rights yeah. violation. This is better for human rights Russia. in Cuba. It's better for business here. It's and better all around. I don't even think we'd be having this conversation, E, if the president himself didn't frame it in a rollback right. roll Obama. Obama. He framed that's it that way. That's all. I don't Which his base it. does like. I mean, yeah. admittedly, they want to hear that right. every time. I'm getting yelled at, Rob. Nick says we got to go. says we got to go straight up, straight ahead. The Trump administration making big moves on immigration and the future of illegal alien children and parents in America. That's moments away. Oh, I think that I found myself a cheerleader. She is always right there when I need her. Oh, I think that I found myself. The Trump administration making waves over the fate of two Obama-era executive orders on immigration. Now, as the presidential candidate, Trump was one of the fiercest critics, and last night the administration officially revoked the so-called DAPA program designed to protect the undocumented immigrant parents of U.S. citizens from deportation. Also last night, the administration issued a memo indicating that the DACA program, which allows undocumented immigrants brought into the U.S. as children, will remain in effect. However, the White House coming out strongly today to say that no final decision has been made on the long-term fate of the program. All right, so Eric, there were those that were uh, very quick to jump on this, and particularly the New York Times came out with a headline right away saying that basically this is Trump not meeting a, a campaign promise. Roll that back, saying that uh, he hasn't met it so far, but the long-term fate unclear. Even if he lets uh, the children stay, the dreamers, so-called yeah. dreamers stay, Da is DACA, his face, uh, DACA. right, DACA, not DAPA. Is his face really going to be upset by that, do you think? You know, I think this is another example of what we just talked about in the last block, the Cuban policy, where it's not exactly hardcore what he promised in his campaign, but it is partially. So it's almost like a negotiation with the with the, the illegal community, um, which, look, that's what, for, for me, that's what Donald Trump is all about. Yeah, he got, he, he went out there and, you know, said a, a lot of things, and he's negotiated better deals, I think, all the way around. I don't think that anyone in their right mind, well, I, should, I shouldn't should say that. I think what he, this is the, 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 the nicest way to implement what the campaign promised. The spirit of what he wanted. Yeah, because yeah, I remember Greg Gutfeld. get to stay for now, yep. and the, 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 the illegal parents got to go. Got to go, because Greg Gutfeld uh, was someone of, of here at Fox News that said that most of what Trump said on the campaign trail was an opening negotiation. Uh, is that something you would agree with? So far, from what you've well, seen. I think he would tell you that. I think he's talked about the art of the deal. That's, that's, that's his skill, and that seems, to be, that seems to be what he's done. I, personally, I think that we just need, and this would go against what Trump would say, but I think we need to open up legal immigration avenues so we double or triple our legal immigration mm -hmm. two or three million people a year rather than the one million. Yeah, I, I agree excellent. with that excellent. completely. I mean, that's a great economic boost. Aaron, what do you think in terms of how this will play out politically for President Trump? Well, I think you're going to see some big resistance protests after this one. Uh, because he's cutting it both ways. You know, he did get something on the board for the base, which obviously the Trump administration is trying to get some wins on the board so that they can engage the base, make it happy. Um, but then I, I noticed today that the White House rushed to say, well, we're not going to make a decision on DACA just yet. They're just stalling that one. So ultimately, so, you think they're going to permit the dreamers to stay? I think so. I think it's a stalling maneuver to kind of, again, throw another little bone to the base, say, you know, hold up. We'll see. Jessica, do you think the Dreamers get to stay, ultimately? I, I do think that they do. I mean, I think that inherently Donald Trump wouldn't mind if all 11 million people who are here illegally had stayed. But he really? ran in the Republican primary. Yeah, I mean, Donald Trump is a New York City guy. I mean, he's a builder. He is a friend of, I mean, you hear it all the time, a friend of police officers and firemen and union workers. And I think that he 
in the past few years, and this is not just from the campaign, but certainly since he started shifting right and kind of went down the birther hole and all of that, has, has moved to a place that I don't think is who he was years ago. So I, I don't think he cares about the 11 million people, but I think that now he has made these promises. And he is very aware of the fact that, for instance, that border wall is not going up anytime soon, right? That's not going to get through in a spending package. What I would say, though... Oh, the wall's is, going up. Right. How do you know, Eric? How do you know that? How do you know that? Can I just say about these parents, though, you know, the five million, this program this? only... The wall will go up before there's evidence of collusion between the Russians and the Trump administration. I'll take that back. Five dollars you got. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the, these five million people, the parents, though, I mean, to qualify for this program, you have to have no criminal record. And that was something that Donald Trump was really harsh on, that we can't got to get the criminals out. And also over the next sure. 10 years, mm -hmm. we'll lose $230 billion to the American economy by kicking these people out because they do work. And they will pay and taxes. And Social Security and a lot of these, Absolutely. they put money into these programs. Right. They don't even, even they get don't back take out. Entitlements. They just want to be part of our society and we should allow them to. And, I, and Eric, you agree that legal, yeah. make legal, legal immigration. Yeah, but the problem is legal. these aren't legal. Ha no, but we have you to make it, it We make it easier. Okay, we got to we got to run. They're, they're yelling at me, guys. Coming up, Russia saying that they have killed the leader of ISIS. How would this death impact the escalating threat from the terror group? Stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back to the Fox News Specialist. Our specialists today are Aaron McPike, along with Jessica Tarlov, who is the author of the upcoming book, America in the Age of Trump. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. You're going to have to read that one <laughs> slowly. Do you let's hate Donald Trump? Let's continue the conversation. Whatever do you mean? Well, Actually, it's very fair. We have some very, very good news to announce. Russia announcing it may have killed Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS. It says it received information indicating that Baghdadi was, president at, was present at a meeting of top ISIS commanders in Raqqa, Syria, last month. The gathering was hit by Russian airstrikes. But if officially verified, will this impact the onslaught of recent attacks across the globe by ISIS? Now, Aaron, I'll start with you. I think this is big news. I think it's demoralizing to ISIS, but you think differently. Well, first of all, it has not been confirmed by a number of other anti -ISIS. Some experts say that he wasn't in Raqqa. The right. In so, May, yeah. So, so we don't know yet. But I agree that it could be a moral victory for coalition forces for a while. But you have to think about ISIS as a monster. You cut off its head, two grow in its place, or eight grow in its place. And I will tell you this. I went to a Pentagon uh, briefing about last month um, when they said Raqqa might not be the final battle if anti ISIS forces take back Raqqa. That just means the ISIS fighters who are left are going to go find another territory to claim. Mm -hmm. And you have to think about his leadership in the same way. Even if their leader is killed, another leader will come in his place. So, Kat, uh, you, you and I may agree on this, that we, uh, there are places that we just don't need to be fighting yep. a war. This yep. may be one of them. But how about the good news that it wasn't Americans that killed Baghdadi, allegedly? It's the Russians. The Russian, yeah, exactly. The less that we have to be doing in these areas, I think it's better. I'm not some of these people who say, American dominance, let's just be everywhere with all of our troops just to show how dominant we are. I feel like there's better ways we can spend our money than that, just personally. So I think that's like what you and I agree investigation? on. investigation? Yeah, I like totally on agree. anything at home. <laughs> things at home. <laughs> things at home. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, there you go. So, yeah, but then again, we have to just wait and see, because this guy's been reported dead more than just this one time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Ebony, yeah, it's, I remember back when we first found out that al-Baghdadi he was the leader of ISIS, and he was up there. And you remember that he was wearing like this big Rolex yeah, watch. Yeah, yeah, pimping. This is the guy. I think this is the one when you take the linchpin, the kingpin down. Sometimes and, and Aaron's right though. Yeah. You're not gonna kill ISIS. You're just gonna turn the name into but something think about else. about all the lone wolves who have been inspired by ISIS. They're not gonna go away either. Yeah. No. No. Look, I mean, is this uh, better than the alternative? Him still being uh, out and about? Absolutely. But no, Eric, I can't say that this makes me feel particularly hopeful that the end of ISIS is near. Um, certainly the, the ideology is so pervasive, unfortunately, and it's so spread out. Frankly, uh, Raqqa, I mean, I think a lot of people have already moved away from that area and we know that. So I think that Really what we need to do is, is attack ISIS on a multi-front type of thing and just get a whole bunch of people at one time. I think mm. these one-offs, mm. uh, one at a time, doesn't really make me Interesting. feel that. Interesting. A little bit of a hawk there, a it bit. sounds like. Yeah. Dr. Tarlov, Dr. Tarlov, yeah. I, um, let me ask you. I'm about to surprise you. Uh, you I'm excited. Uh, you, you're, you're, you're happy about this? Oh, uh, if it's true, 
I'm hugely happy about it for the moral victory front and also because I think that it was important. It was so central to Barack Obama's presidency as well that he could have those moments where he could come out there and say, we got a big one. And I think that when we are facing the threat of terror attacks, lone wolves attacks here and people are afraid to go to Europe. I mean, I'm heading to Europe tonight and I've certainly had conversations with the people that were unpleasant. I'm going to France and to England and there's great concern there. So I think that it is good for morale for the nation, not that you shouldn't be afraid anymore, but to say we are making some advances mm -hmm. and we can work with coalition partners that we are still in the midst of sanctioning, but maybe Russia can be useful to us in some way. So I wait on confirmation, but. And we'll leave it on there. That's a great note to leave it on. When we come right back, it's Cat on the Street bringing some levity amid some very emotional news this week. Plus, powerful moments of unity at last night's congressional baseball game in the wake of Wednesday's shooting. Stick around. It's been a rough emotional news week, to put it mildly, with plenty of reason to feel gloomy about things. Yesterday was National Smile Power Day. And on the streets of New York, some people still had some reasons to smile. So today is National Smile Day. I don't really like people telling me what to do, so I was like, boo. What do you think about smiling? Smiling is pretty fun. A lot of things make me smile. Food makes me smile. Just random acts of people in general. How people in general is why I frown. What kind of stuff do you like to smile about? Family. Jokes? Like telling some jokes in the sunshine with your family. <laughs> yeah, that would do it. So what else makes you smile? Bunnies. But do you ever think about how, you know, they die? I love smiling. You love smiling? Yeah, it makes, it's beautiful. It makes me look sexy. Seems like everyone I've talked to today really loves smiling. What do you guys think? Uh, smiling is very, uh, I think, infectious. I think it brings out the best in people. I feel like frowns don't get the credit that they really deserve. Um, frowns get a bad rap a little bit. Yes, they do. You know, I feel like there's some some positives to frowning. What about my smile? Ready? Yeah, it's cute. Is that a good one? What about this? No. No, <laughs> not a good one. When I smile, like that looks fake. Like, kind of stank look, you know what I mean? It's like... Smiles like this? Smiles like... Yeah. <laughs> good one. It's a good one. <laughs> He's a liar. Smile to everybody. Doesn't matter who it is. I think it's just a powerful tool of communication. I feel like the right guy for me would be, like, more into frowning. Interesting. So you don't think there should be, like, a frown day? No. No. I feel like the world is such a bitter place right now, and it's such a sad place that if everyone just truly smiled at each other a little more, it might make the world just a little better. I've been told I don't look approachable. Is that true? Yes. How come you're not smiling? Because I don't want to. I don't always want to. Do you think I should smile a little more? Only for today. All right. Uh, See, never smile. ever well smile. Done. You don't know who's falling in love with your frown. Who, who edited that package? <laughs> Not sure who did. Monaco, probably. Mm. Good, well, good stuff. Good job. Yeah. Great job, Monica. Last night, politics and partisanship took a timeout during the annual congressional baseball game in Washington. Lawmakers and tens of thousands of attendees turned out to honor the heroics of the Capitol Police officers who prevented a massacre and paid tribute to the wounded Congressman Steve Scalise and the other victims of Wednesday's, excuse me, Wednesday shooting. They're Pause. getting around second base because remember, Steve Scalise was manning second base on that practice field. You can hear everyone chanting USA. It's very moving here tonight, I have to say. I mean, and they're, they're coming together for And a now prayer. everyone is kneeling down to pray. And you can Let's take see. a moment here. This is Officer Bailey, who was injured and who took down the shooter with his officer Griner, who was also working with him. He threw out the first pitch. We spend every day together, working together. Our, our, our families are close, our staffs are very close. Uh, he's in the hospital, he, he's, he's recovering. He's got a ways to go. Uh, we're all praying for him. We're all close to Steve Scalise. He's a lovely person. But this game is a game where we always come to have fun, root for everybody to do their very best, and hope that our team wins. Tonight, we're all Team Scalise. 
A lot of heartwarming moments last night. Also, doctors provided an update on Congressman Scalise's health today, saying he's still in critical condition, but they've controlled his internal bleeding and his vital signs have stabilized. Mm. All great. Really, really. Can I point out, Officer Bailey, that was the most heart, uh, heartwarming moment of the whole night. You know, he's the one who returned fire on, on, on the, the psychopath on Wednesday. Uh, throwing that pitch out, you right. just, just got to say, you know, thank God for, for men and women like Officer Bailey and the other uh, Capitol Hill police officer, female, who was also shot as well. Just and, and just on a side note, he threw the pitch better than Barack Obama did when he threw that pitch oh out. Oh, my God. Just, Always. Uh, just a unique <laughs> that you want to throw in there. The... Just, well, maybe they taught him that. Well, the, lib Carolina the liberals did win, though. The they, liberals. They did. Yes, but then yeah. did you see that they brought yeah. the trophy immediately to Scalise's office and that the captain, that was always his plan, but he didn't tell the team until the end because he wanted them to you know, remain competitive, but they immediately went straight for it. I, I thought it was fantastic. It was nice to see Paul Ryan and Nancy Pelosi. That was the most ingenuous <laughs> moment of the night with Nancy Pelosi after spending the day trashing Republicans for the shooting of Republicans, blaming Republicans and Fox, and then she, said, then she has the audacity to go sit next to Paul Ryan and then say this is Scalise's night. But she got off her talking Come points on. for me. Yeah. And I, quite frankly, I, I think that's a problem that she's still the leadership of the party um, because I think the party is handicapped, quite frankly, by having her in that role because they can't grow beyond it. I will say I was happy also to see all the LSU gear. Um, yeah. I thought all that purple and gold was a very nice nod uh, to uh, Steve Scalise. I was there last night and I would say that it is the most engaged audience I have ever seen at Nats Park. Right. It was a nice night. And not, uh, for this game. Because Nats are in the playoff. Well, they, they, well, I was like, is that now. Nats shade coming from here? Okay. But I, I like the Nats, but they always disappoint us. You know what the good news is? <laughs> so, yes, it maybe, <laughs> maybe the, if there's any silver lining to all this, maybe it brings awareness to this game and the, and the, yeah. and the money that they yeah. raise. Yeah, so 600000 a year. Yeah, so that the years going forward, they, they raise a lot more money. If they raised a million this year, yeah. so that's great. Yeah, no, I talked to a couple people yesterday, staffers on the Hill who didn't normally go and just friends in D.C., and they said, we're all going. And I think it's a sensational thing. We know as New Yorkers here, you know, what can happen out of times of tragedy and people really coming together and, you know, besides Nancy Pelosi, that inauthentic witch. Uh, Jessica Tarloff, she literally yeah. blamed conservatives in the morning, Fox News in the afternoon for I love the shooting you, and, my full you know, the attempted murders of, of, you know, 30 I, or so Republicans. I, I and then she pretends to be buddy buddies with Paul well, Ryan. I don't think that what she said were all team Scalise that she was pretending there. She's known him a really you know? long time. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I think those that was her coming off as her talking point, Jessica, in the moment that yeah. she acknowledged that. Kind of an uh, off comment, but a question. What are your thoughts on Nancy Pelosi uh, being the face of the Democratic Party in this moment? I actually think so. When Tim Ryan, the young Ohio Republican, ch uh, challenged her for the leadership, I thought that that was a healthy thing to be at least having the conversation about where the party is today and how we're going to win more elections. I mean, we obviously we lost big in 2016, but we lost over a thousand seats right in the during Obama. Barack Obama's term. Um, I think that conversation needs to be had. I do think that she has been and continues to be an effective leader, but I don't know what's going to happen in the coming years. And I think that we certainly need to be, you know, getting a, an excellent farm team up there, right? And pulling more people in like Tim Ryan and the mayor from South Bend, Indiana, who was fantastic and was running for DNC chair. Uh, there are a lot of young, exciting people and the enthusiasm also on young Democrats to get out there and start running, especially women, has been huge. Thousands saying that they're going to run. So uh, I, I think it's I think the future is bright. How long does the unity last? <laughs> uh, it's already kind of not. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there'll be shades of it next week, but I don't think it'll last much longer. Like Monday morning-ish? Once that health care <laughs> bill drops, I think right. you will not see any right. unity anymore. Probably not. Absolutely. No, that's so sad. Yeah. It's very sad, but it's yeah. politics. 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 Politics are sad. All right. All right, well, when we return, we will circle back with our specialists, Aaron McPike and Jessica Tarlov. Don't go away. Time to circle back with our specialist, Aaron McPike and Jessica Tarloff. All right, I will start with you, Aaron. I have a question for you about your dog. I need to know the breed. I need to know how long you've had your dog because I'm a new doggy mommy. Uh, and I love that your dog is named after Benjamin ben Franklin. Franklin. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, his birthday is July 3rd, one day before Jessica's 
book comes out. He'll be a year old on July 3rd. He's a purebred black lab, and I've had him since Labor Day weekend last year. Okay. And do you get criticisms that your dog has a real person's name? Because my dog's named Carrie James, and people like give me a hard time because they feel like they should have like a puppy name, like Coco or something. <laughs> oh, I don't like that. Seriously. I like having a real name, and people say, say to me that Franklin's a great name. And I've had people say, oh, he must be the smartest dog in puppy class because his name is Franklin. No, yeah, not smarter yeah. than my, my Carrie. My James. dog's name is Freedom. Freedom. I like that, Eric. Your dog's name is Freedom. Freedom. Yes, yes. <laughs> can I, can I, just, can I, can I point out these two specialists just for one second right now? Uh, Aaron McPike, one of the most well respected uh, journalists in D.C., we're, we're thankful to have you. IJR, you work at IJR now. Great group of people. It's one of my must reads in the morning. Oh, good. And Jessica Tarlov, Dr. Jessica Tarlov. <laughs> I'm not, not making it, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not joking. You have a PhD in political science, right? I do, yes. We I have, have a question great for you, though, Jessica. Is it about my thesis? So your Didn't book. Didn't plagiarize it, I promise. Your book's coming out July 4th. It is. How can you do that when you're a Democrat, which means you don't like America? Oh, totally, yeah. <laughs> no, tell us about your book. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited. I wrote it uh, with Doug Schoen, who's also a Fox News contributor, and I worked for him for a blissful four and a half years uh, until blissful. January. Blissful. No, what? That could be the first time oh. anyone talked about working with Doug as being blissful, but okay. Doug, if you're watching, <laughs> I didn't say that. Um, anyway, so actually, uh, it's not a partisan book. Uh, it's no. a. No, no, it. No, legitimately, it's not. Uh, it is a roadmap. <laughs> oh, you right. It's Friday. Voice. I'm sorry. It's, it's Friday. Worst we have 30 behavior. seconds left of the show. Anyway, it's a, a, a roadmap, a bipartisan roadmap map to how we can address about 10 or 11 key issue areas. And we pull solutions from the left and from the right, the center left and the center right, actually, uh, to show how we can come together on like health care and the economy and national security. Congrats, and it's really good. That's Thank you great. so much. Thank you so much to our Fox News specialists today, both Aaron McPike and Jessica Tarloff. And thank you all for watching. Make sure you follow us on social media at Specialist FNC on both Twitter and Facebook. And remember, 5 o'clock will never be the same. Special report up next. More palace intrigue over the special counsel investigation. And President Trump undoes one of President Obama's major initiatives on Cuba. This is Special Report.